uh, DEP Commissioner Rit Agrawala, uh, NISIM Commissioner Zach Iskell, as well as MTA CEO Jano Lieber. We're also joined this morning by NYPD Chief of Department Jeffrey Madry, FDNY Commissioner Laura Cavanaugh, DOE Chancellor David Banks, New York City Health and Hospital CEO Mitch Katz, Department of Transportation Commissioner Yadonis Rodriguez, and Senior Vice President for Corporate Affairs at Con Edison, Jen Hensley. Uh, so without uh, any further delay, uh, Mayor Adams. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Fabian and the entire team and New Yorkers uh, for understanding uh, how uh, this uh, rain condition that we are experiencing is something that we cannot take lightly and we have not taken uh, lightly. Uh, this morning, I was out visiting East New York, Flatbush, Canarsie, and Sheepshead Bay uh, to get a firsthand look at the impact of the rainfall and what uh, it is doing to uh, moving around the city. Uh, I spoke with Governor Hochul, who's here with us today. I want to thank you, Governor, for once again uh, responding immediately and seeking out what it, whatever help we need as a city, and I really appreciate uh, communicating with you this morning. I am issuing a state of an emergency for New York City uh, based on the weather conditions, and I want to say to all New Yorkers, uh, this is time for heightened alertness and extreme caution. Uh, if you are home, stay home. If you are at work or school, shelter in place for now. Uh, some of our subways are flooded, and it's extremely difficult to move around the city. Uh, many of our area airports are experiencing delays, uh, and if you are out and enc encounter a flood, a flooded area, uh, be it on a roadway or a subway station, uh, do not enter. Take necessary precaution. Uh, this is a dangerous weather condition, and it is not over. And I don't want uh, those gaps in heavy rain to give the appearance that it is over. It is not. We could possibly see eight inches of rain before the day is over. Our city is already taking action to protect all New Yorkers, including uh, rescuing those in need of help. There was an issue on uh, the Belt Parkway by the Ocean Parkway exit. Uh, those are the types of roadway conditions we're asking New Yorkers to avoid. Every single one of our agencies uh, has an emergency plan, and we are executing those plans. We're ready, and you should be at well to be prepared for this moment. Commissioner Isco from New York City Emergency Management will provide more detailed updates uh, to us on the situation throughout the city. Uh, this is a time for caution, but it's also a time for community. Uh, check on neighbors. Uh, do whatever is possible to unclog drain areas to allow the water to fro flow freely. Uh, you would be surprised how if we remove leaves and other trash from those areas, it will really assist in getting water off our streets. Uh, check on your friends, your relatives, and especially those who are most vulnerable, such as the elderly and individuals with health conditions. If the conditions are safe, take time, as I indicated, to clean out the debris from your drains, in, particularly in between the heavy rainfall. And for the most accurate and timely updates, sign up for Notify NYC. This is a moment to remind everyone of how important, important Notify NYC is. Those alerts go a long way to keep you ahead of what is happening. You could dial 311 or visit nyc.gov slash notify to subscribe. That's nyc.gov slash notify to subscribe. And you can also call 311. Being informed is the first step toward ensuring the well-being of you and your family and your fellow New Yorkers. And again, uh, I want to thank the entire team for their quick response and understanding uh, that this is an extreme emergency uh, measures, extreme emergency condition that we must be prepared for. I want to turn it over to uh, uh, Governor Hochul. Uh, Governor, again, thanks so much. It was good talking to you this morning and your quick response to what is happening in our city area. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Mayor. And once again, I commend your leadership and uh, the coordination between your team and our team at the state level. It is seamless. 
And the bottom line is we're here to help New Yorkers get through what is a, a life-threatening rainfall event. And I agree with you that people should be able to stay home if possible. But I know right now there's a lot of anxious parents wondering if they're going to be able to get their children home from schools. And I'm working very close with Jan Lieber, who will give updates from the MTA. But our priority once the immediate uh, in the after, immediate aftermath of this first wave of the storm, and again, it could come back again. It could reemerge later again this afternoon. But we want to make sure we get the subways, the trains, uh, our communication system, our transportation system up working because there's children who use the subway to get home from school. People need to be able to know if they can get home from work. And so that is priority number one to make sure that our, our subways and our rail systems are safe. There have been significant disruptions without a doubt, uh, particularly heading north. I just spoke to the county executive, George Latimer of Westchester County. The epicenter has shifted from the city region, very much so from Brooklyn and Queens and Manhattan, where I spoke to the borough presidents to offer our assistance in the Bronx, but is now heading north into the Hudson Valley. So we're also coordinating with those localities as well as Nassau County. Uh, I will say this, if people decide to venture out in a vehicle, they do so at their own peril because even six inches of rain, one foot of rain, it may look pretty innocuous, it's safe, but that is a condition where your vehicle can be swept away and we lose more lives of people during flooding events of which we've had many, especially this summer in the city in the Hudson Valley in particular. The reason people lose their lives in a flood event more often than not is they're swept away in their vehicles. So this is a choice people make we encourage them not to decide to do that. Please uh, stay home, be safe. We'll, uh, we are deploying more buses. We have more bus operators to be able to create uh, options if we don't get the subways back on schedule. The airports uh, right now, Terminal A at LaGuardia is closed because of flooding at a fuel field right now. We brought in more resources from JFK to assist with that as well. Uh, the flights are going in and out of the airports, but they are delayed and so people should check on uh, the websites for that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we're trying to be as helpful as we can. The city mayor, you've been fantastic. Uh, we've deployed National Guard. We've deployed uh, more pumps from our surplus to help you assist. And everyone remembers what happened. I was literally governor one week when Hurricane Ida hit. And we walked those streets of Queens and many parts of the city. And people literally drowned in their basement homes. And so people also need to not get in vehicles but leave your home if you're starting to see water accumulate. Don't wait until it's up to your knees or higher. Uh, by then, it could be a, a barrier to getting able to have access safely out the door, as we saw before. And so people really need to be taking this extremely seriously. The state is there to help, and uh, let, we'll get through this together as we always do. So thank you, Mayor, for uh, your coordination, your outreach, and uh, look forward to continuing to work as we get through this event uh, united as one. Thank you very much, Governor Hochul. Thank you, Mayor Adams, for the update. Next, we'll get a full update from New York City Emergency Management Commissioner Zach Iskell. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Governor Hochul. Uh, first and foremost, I also want to express my heartfelt gratitude uh, to the emergency managers, to our first responders, our agency partners who've all been working tirelessly overnight and over the past day, preparing the city and, and doing all they can to keep New Yorkers safe. Uh, they really are the backbone of, of the city. Our emergency operations center has been active in an operation to effectively coordinate our multi-agency response to this ongoing weather crisis. We have teams right now that are specifically focused on highway flooding, basement flooding, and the impacts of the MTA. Uh, we're monitoring uh, continuously uh, a number of high-risk areas uh, in order to deploy teams from different agencies to take immediate action as needed. Uh, through the day yesterday and today, we've also been issuing really important safety messages and updates to the public. Uh, it's crucial for everyone to stay tuned to the latest information. As the mayor said, uh, that's the first line of defense. Uh, we're also very fortunate the National Weather Service is on site at our command center here at New York City Emergency Management. They've been invaluable in providing real-time updates, allowing us to make sure that information is getting out to our agency partners and the public with the most accurate forecasts. Uh, and weather information uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, as I said, we're also in a very active response mode right now. We're confronting the severe weather conditions that are affecting our city as we speak, 
a National Weather Service flood watch is in effect. And let me be clear, we're taking this extremely, extremely seriously. Uh, consultations with the National Weather Service began as early as Wednesday. Uh, they remain ongoing, and we will continue to monitor this situation as it evolves. Uh, this proactive approach is part of our flash flood plan, which is our comprehensive strategy uh, that we've been honing over the years to make sure that we're able to respond effectively to situations just like this one. Um, I think it's worth mentioning that according to data from Central Park, today is the wettest day we've had since Ida swept through the city a few years ago. Uh, the governor was just talking about that event a week into her, uh, her tenure. Uh, that's not a statistic to take lightly. It highlights just how crucial it is for all of us to pay close attention to the weather advisories and to always take the necessary precautions. Uh, particularly in, in Brooklyn today and in parts of Queens, we've seen significant flooding. We expect another two to four inches of rain likely throughout this afternoon. Uh, if you live in these boroughs or in a basement apartment or flood prone area, uh, please make sure you have plans and are prepared to move to higher ground. Uh, your safety is our foremost concern. Uh, we have multiple contingency plans in place, but ultimately, uh, you know, you are your first line of defense for yourself and your loved ones. And that means acting on the information that we're able to provide uh, through things like notify NYC that the mayor mentioned. Um, also, uh, I urge everyone to extreme to exercise extreme caution, avoid flooded roadways. Uh, if you are driving, and I do not encourage you to be driving, uh, as the governor said, even six inches of water can be very, very dangerous. Um, please take extreme caution, particularly uh, during high tides today uh, throughout the city. Um, we're also in constant communication with our law enforcement partners, other agencies, and community organization. We're all working in lockstep to ensure your safety. Uh, to that end, I do encourage everyone to sign up for Notify NYC. As the mayor said, uh, you can sign up uh, by going to nyc.gov backslash notify. You can sign up by calling 311 or by downloading the app in both the Google and the Apple uh, app stores. It's available in 14 languages, including American Sign Language. And then as we start to shift into the recovery phase of this operation, uh, after uh, the rain uh, ends uh, this evening and, and early tomorrow, um, if you have damage, you can now report damage to your home or your business as part of the city's damage reporting portal. This is really easy to do. Uh, you can do uh, report damage by calling 311 or by visiting reportdamage.nyc.gov. Um, so New Yorkers, you know, we have a great history of coming together when it counts. We're gonna do it again today. Uh, make sure to check in on your neighbors, your loved ones, especially the most vulnerable. Please pay close attention to those alerts and advisories. They are designed to keep you safe. Thank you so much and stay safe. Thank you very much, Commissioner Iskall. Next, we'll hear from New York City Department of Environmental Protection, Commissioner Rit Agarwal. Commissioner. Uh, good morning. Um, just, uh, just to build on Commissioner Iskall's points um, about the intensity of the rainfall, uh, you know, one of the things I think New Yorkers should bear in mind is that uh, when we see flooding, we see it primarily due to the intensity of the rainfall in a certain period of time rather than the full duration. Um, and as I think many New Yorkers observed, this rainfall started last night. DEP started preparing for it yesterday around midday. Starting around 2 p.m., we were encouraging people to deploy the flood barriers that DEP has been distributing to the most vulnerable New Yorkers. And we prepared by having lots of crews on hand for today, which we knew would be busy. The storm picked up significantly soon after 7 a.m., and I think New Yorkers should be aware that between 8 and 9 a.m., the Brooklyn Navy Yard received 2.58 inches of rain in one hour. Uh, and I think many of you know, um, in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida, we were all educated about the fact that our sewer system was designed for 1.75 inches per hour, and so it's no, no surprise, unfortunately, as a result, that that part of Brooklyn and a couple of other particularly parts of Brooklyn have borne the brunt of this. The good news is we have a partially completed flood net system where we are able to monitor flooding on the roads in a couple of places that is en route to be completed over the next two to three years. Um, but right now what we have seen is that as the rain began to subside after nine o'clock, most many of those uh, flooding areas have begun to recede. Overall, as we know, 
this this changing weather pattern is the result of climate change and the sad reality is our climate is changing faster than our infrastructure can respond we have been working at the mayor's direction for well over a year on a significant medium term approach to increasing green infrastructure and expanding the sewer system but changing infrastructure takes time it's one of the reasons for the for more than a year we've been doing things like distributing flood barriers and helping people understand how they can protect their own homes and properties and working with emergency management under Commissioner Iskell's leadership to recognize that the weather can kill you and that we have to respond uh, appropriately. Um, I appreciate very much our collaboration, not only with uh, my city colleagues, but also, of course, with the governor and her team. And we are in close touch with our state colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, next, we'll hear from MTA CEO Jano Lieber before we open it up to Q&A. CEO. Thank you. Uh, listen, this is a tough travel day. Uh, there are significant portions of the subway system that are shut down. We are starting the process of reactivating certain lines. Um, but when water covers the uh, electrified third rail, we have to do inspections so that that will be unfolding slowly. We do have a full bus system operation today. There are about 3,500 buses out there, and that's especially important, as the governor says, to get kids home from school. So if you must travel and heed the, the, the warnings of the governor and the mayor and others, that it's not a day to travel if you don't have to. But if you do, buses are available. We have full Long Island Railroad service, but Metro North at this time has really been shut down. All three trunk lines of Metro North, the New Haven, Harlem, and Hudson lines, are shut down at this time because of water in the South Bronx. And we are developing a service plan, hoping that we can uh, that we can uh, reactivate those, those operations. We're developing a, uh, a limited service plan for this afternoon with the hope and expectation we'll be able to get everybody home. The good news is that New Yorkers heeded Governor Hochul's warnings and the MTA's warnings and the city's warnings from yesterday. And we had, it is a Friday, it's a lighter than normal commute. It's always a light day on Friday and New Yorkers listened. One of the reasons that they listened is that we have really a, a strong text alert system and I urge everybody who doesn't have it to sign up for mta.info slash notify. Um, in the meantime, if you have to travel, if you are still out there, please consult the MTA apps. My MTA, the train time app, and the MTA website, mta.info. We have full up-to-date information. As I said, about half of the subway system is either fully suspended or partially suspended. But we are starting to, to uh, the process of trying to get some of those lines back. The other positive news I would emphasize is that since Hurricane Ida two years ago, Governor Hochul instructed us to work with the city to try to make some of the stations more resilient so we wouldn't have those impacts on customers that you saw a couple of years ago. That collaboration has produced results, and to date, there haven't been any of those crazy uh, washouts inside the stations, though, as I said, service has been affected. Please stay close to those MTA apps for real-time information, My MTA, uh, the Train Time app, and uh, www.mta.info. Thank you. Thank you, CEO Lieber. And so with that, we'll open it up to some on-topic questions. Okay, just a reminder, if you have a question, to use the hand raise function on your screen. We'll start with Ethan Stark Miller from AM New York. Ethan, you can now unmute your line. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Um, okay, so question for Mr. Mayor. I mean, there are asylum seekers in shelters that are tent-like facilities at Creedmoor on Randall's Island. Are they safe in those facilities with these conditions? And is the city taking any steps to move them elsewhere? Uh, we have no reported conditions in those areas on Randall's and in at the Creepmore location. And of course, if there are any conditions uh, that are dangerous, we're going to make sure that people receive the proper care and make the proper movement. Mayor, I just got an update on Randall specifically. Uh, we've seen very minimal leaking at Randall's Island and uh, any problems that will be very quickly addressed. Uh, so we have no issues really at Randall's Island at this point. Great, next we'll go to Katie Honan from the city. Katie, you can now mute your line. 
two questions briefly. Chancellor Banks, there have been reports of schools flooding. Um, I saw someone tweet that the cafeteria was flooded, students can't eat. My question for you, and I guess the question for the mayor is, we've now, New York City has been flooded for hours now. We're finally now hearing from the city. A press release, I think for a lot of people doesn't count. Why did you not take more precautions when it came to schools? Students don't know how they're gonna get home if the subways don't return service. Um, and, and secondly, I don't know if there's any disruption with bus services. And so I guess the question is for the chancellor, can you give an update on schools and which ones are flooded? And for the mayor, why did you not speak to New Yorkers sooner about what is a very, very serious flooding situation that we knew about for at least 24 hours? Uh, Katie, we, um, the chancellor is going to uh, go into the school situation and what we have right now. Uh, but we have, num number one, notified NYC and using the various social media cha channels. And Commissioner Isco has been speaking about this from uh, afternoon yesterday. So all the necessary precautions are, were taken. Uh, we have gone through uh, these flood-related and heavy rain conditions before, and we followed the right protocol. And really take my hat off to Commissioner Isco and the entire team as they put in place a situation of communication using the virtual me methods and monitoring the situation, uh, really uh, doing what needed to be done and making the right notifications and informations and constantly keeping New Yorkers uh, up to date. Uh, Chancellor, can you go into the school situation? Where, where are we at this time? Sure, Mayor. Uh, first of all, it's just important to note that all of our schools, every single one of our schools are open. Uh, we're actively monitoring the situation across all of our buildings. Um, we, uh, we have safety plans in place, and that's important to note. That, and we have folks in our schools who are trained annually to prepare for days just like this. Um, our building response teams, they fully activated, and our protocol is to, in fact, shelter in place. Now, we do have a portion of our schools, approximately 150 out of the more than 1,400 schools that we have that have, in fact, taken on some water, has presented some challenge, but nothing has impacted the ability for us to safely educate our students in any of those schools. Our schools have safety plans in place and, uh, and they are moving forward uh, uh, and they're keeping us abreast. This stuff is happening uh, in, real, in real time. Um, there's one school is actually evacuating currently due to a smoking boiler, and that is PS 132 in Brooklyn. And it looks like there may have been some water that got into a boiler. So we evacuated in that school to IS-78, which is located three blocks away. Um, that's the only school that we've had to, uh, to, to date uh, at this time have to actually evacuate. Um, our facilities and the School Construction Authority are working together to quickly repair any damage. Uh, even now, we've got folks out in many of these buildings in real time. Uh, now, also, I want to note that we received multiple media inquiries about the Davis, the David Booty School, which is IS-228 in Brooklyn. And the message that the principal of that school sent was premature in telling parents to come up to get their kids, which was precisely the wrong thing to do. The conditions are worse outside of the schools. And so we'll be addressing that. But as the rain lightens up, uh, we're continuing to monitor the situation. And uh, what's also important is that our buses are pre-positioned for dismissal. We've been in touch with all of our vendors. And their pre-position means that they are staging early in order to have enough time to get our kids home. These are high axle vehicles and they'll be able to navigate any water in the roadways. So uh, in closing, I would simply say, uh, our schools are open, we feel good. Uh, we're fully prepared, we're ready to go. We have taken on some water, but nothing that has created an infrastructure problem where we, our kids are not safe. Our kids are safe and we are, we're continuing to monitor the situation. Thank you, Chancellor. And just to add a little to what the mayor said earlier, uh, our first travel, uh, or excuse me, our first Notify NYC alert went out yesterday afternoon around 2.50 p.m. We One of the first uh, efforts we took was issuing a travel advisory. We've been in touch with uh, local elected officials across the city. Uh, we've also been working with nonprofits. Uh, and like the mayor said, uh, Commissioner Iskell was out there doing interviews yesterday. Uh, Commissioner Iskell is a one of our top uh, Spokesperson, spokespeople for this administration. And so uh, he speaks on behalf of the mayor every single day.
And Commissioner Iskell, could you share a few words about our decision-making process for notifying people uh, and how we make sure that New Yorkers take these notifications seriously by issuing them uh, thoughtfully? Yeah. So first off, so Notify NYC, as I said, it's available in 14 languages, including American Sign Language. Uh, we do a lot of programs, uh, especially since IDA, to really encourage New Yorkers to sign up. We've done a number of day of actions. We did one about a month ago in Jackson Heights and across the city, encouraging people not only to sign up for Notify NYC, but to make sure they have the information they need for these types of flooding events, including the distribution of flood alarms that people can then install in their homes. Uh, in terms of Notify NYC itself for these types of events, uh, we take information, you know, we work very, very closely with the National Weather Service. We take their alerts, their warnings, their analysis, and we make sure that we then translate that uh, literally to 14 different languages in American Sign Language, but also uh, so that the public can understand what that threat might be. In addition to making sure we're providing information, not just what the hazard is, but the actions people can take to keep themselves, their loved ones safe. Thank you, Commissioner Iskell. For the next question, we'll go to Juliet Pappas. Juliet, you can now unmute your line. Juliet, you there? All right, we'll move to- uh, Can, you, oh, can the, you hear me? Yeah, we Hello? hear you now. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, if the fire commissioner is on this call, I was wondering, or who can answer this, uh, have there been basement apartment rescues? And if you have any sense of where and how many, because Ida, there were fatalities at that time. And uh, I was wondering if there are any fatalities so far today. Hi, Juliet, it's uh, Commissioner Cavanaugh. We have not had any fatalities today. Um, we have had a number of calls for basements, um, people trapped in cars. Um, as you've probably seen from the coverage, you can see our vehicles um, out there all over the city, but we have not had any critical patients or fatalities yet today. Just a follow up on Commissioner uh, Kavanaugh. Uh, in the, since the last update I received about an hour ago, we've had uh, reports for six basement apartments flooded, uh, and we've had uh, re successful rescues at each of those. Thanks. Yeah, I'd also like to add to that, um, as the mayor had mentioned, uh, we were made aware yesterday through OEM of, about this storm, and we put additional high axle vehicles out uh, into our operations. So we had equipment that was specifically uh, available and ready for these types of rescues. Next, we'll go to Kelly Mena from New York One. Kelly, you can now unmute your line. Oh, hello. Okay. Um, my first question is to Taylor Banks. I'm wondering why the decision wasn't made to go remote today for students if it's such a severe day. I mean, parents have to travel to get their kids. Kids have to travel to schools. We've heard from multiple officials to stay off the roads today. And then to follow up on Katie's question, Mayor Adams, it's noon right now. Why wasn't the decision to call a state of emergency at 8 a.m. when we knew that rainfall was getting intense? Uh, uh, first, and the Chancellor could talk about remote, uh, but uh, we should be clear uh, that uh, we have only a certain number of school days that we could utilize, and we must make sure we meet that. And as you see, uh, the decision was, a, was the right decision. Uh, we do not have any issues, dangerous issues at our schools. Our children are in the schools. They're properly being educated, and I believe the Chancellor made the right call. And if there was a need to uh, close the schools, he would have made that call. But this was the right call. Our, our children are safe in schools. It stabilizes the family. They don't have a level of uncertainty of how they get to and from uh, their office spaces. There is a big inconvenience when you close the school and parents uh, disrupt their normal uh, workflow and we disrupt a child's education flow at the same time. This was the right decision to do as we see we are continuously moving forward and our children are safe in their school, schools. Uh, Chancellor, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, no, just that I would echo what you said, Mr. Mayor. You know, uh, I've heard that on, on, on other occasions as well. I don't want people to be very clear. The decision to go remote is always the last option. Uh, our kids need to be in school. This is where they also get their healthy meals as well. 
Uh, this is what allows parents to be able to continue their day and get to work and do the other things that need to happen. Whenever we make a decision to actually close schools, it is a major, major disruption. Um, and so it is, it is really only used really as a, as a last resort. Um, and, and I think in this case, while this was a, uh, a tough day in terms of the rain, uh, it certainly did not put, uh, our, our kids are not in danger. All of our schools are open. Our teachers are in school, our kids are in school and, uh, and, and, doing, and doing well. We do have some schools which have had some flooding and we have to address that. But, uh, but we treat taking the, the option of rem the remote learning day very, very seriously. And we use that as a last option. Just really commendable on how professional our school system, our first responders, uh, the exact, exact team during these issues of uh, weather uh, emergencies, we still have to operate a city. And our ability to do so, so is really commendable with the coordination from this team. The city still has to operate with minimum disruption, and that's what you saw in our school system, as well as, as uh, the deputy mayor uh, pointed out, that, you know, able to go in and do those rescues when it's needed and to notify people. Uh, the city must continue to operate, and we want to be clear on, clear on that. Uh, Zach, can you talk about uh, the state of emergency? State of emergency uh, that we're calling is based on conditions, uh, not, not based on predictions. You know, it's based on what condition, but Zach, can you go through that, please? Absolutely. Uh, so there's a number of different uses for a state of emergency, and, and I, I appreciate the question. Um, you know, the, the issuing a state of emergency at 8 a.m., 7 a.m., 9 a.m., or 10 a.m., it's, it's not going to impact our response or the work that we're currently doing. Uh, a lot of the state of emergency is more about things that we can then put in place should we need to around contracting, around different rules, uh, things like if we were going to issue a travel ban, which we are not at the state right now where we would actually implement a travel ban, you know, shutting down roads, not enabling people to freely move around the city. Uh, it's also something that becomes very, very important as we move into the recovery phase, right? One of the things that's needed is, is as we start to assess the damage that has occurred to either people's homes, private personal property, uh, businesses, the state of emergency is something we can then use as we are going to the state and FEMA for additional support to aid in individual assistance, uh, business loans or grants that can help people recover after the floodwaters have receded. I would also add that uh, the governor issued a, her state of emergency uh, this morning around the same time the decision was made here at City Hall. Um, Mayor Adams made the decision around the same time. Uh, so just because we're having the briefing now uh, around 11.30 or 12, whatever it is right now, doesn't mean it wasn't, uh, the decision wasn't made earlier today. Next, we'll go to Mark Morales from CNN. Mark. Mark, you should be able to speak now. All right, we'll go to the next one. Next, we'll go to Craig McCarthy from the New York Post. Craig, you can unmute your line. Hey, Mr. Mayor, I just want to ask, um, so you say you don't need to, your administration is saying you don't need to issue a state of emergency at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. This is about recovery. But you know, the National Weather Service issued an alert at 824 this morning calling the flash flooding warning life-threatening. So why did it take hours then for you to tell the New Yorkers to stay home? Uh, uh, Zach, can you respond to that, please? Yeah. I just want to issue a point of clarification. What I went through is a whole list of reasons that you would use a state of emergency. Uh, preemptively, you would do it if the situation might call for that. In this case, there was no need for additional resources that a state of emergency might provide or things like, you know, issuing a travel ban. There was no need for a state of emergency earlier to be able to do those types of things. I have been in very close contact with my counterparts at both FEMA and the state around whether or not there are additional resources we might need to request, you know, for things like life safety events. But we have the resources here in the city through our incredible partners at FDNY, EMS, NYPD to be able to respond to those types of situations. Um, so I hope that answers your question. 
Next, we'll go to Emma Fitzsimmons from the New York Times. Emma, you can unmute your line. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Emma. Hi, um, good afternoon. So, um, Mayor, I'm curious, you know, why it took so long for you to speak to the public. Um, Governor Hochul was on the radio last night. MTA officials held a news conference. And um, a lot of New Yorkers, you know, were, were worried this morning um, and facing these implications. And why didn't they hear from you sooner? You know, I think it's so important, as I've stated over and over again, this administration uh, operates as a team. And I want my commissioners, my deputy commissioners, uh, the leaders of this team, uh, who are closest to the ground of a situation to communicate. And that's what uh, Commissioner Esco did. Uh, there was not an absence of a voice of this administration, our team leaders uh, that are on the front line. I'm, you know, I'm just really pleased that I have strong, competent leaders that understand their roles that they're supposed to play, and I give them a clear mandate that if something is dealing with a particular issue in your catchment area, I want you to lead from the front. And you see that over and over again. You see it with the chancellor. You see it with uh, Commissioner Kavanaugh. You see it with all of our leaders. And that's what uh, Zach did. You heard from my representative, and he did a good job of informing the public. And that's what you're going to continue to see uh, throughout this administration. We have good team leaders that are competent, that understand the subject matter, and they know how to lead. The leadership is not only the mayor. It is all of those who are placed in those positions, and that's what you saw. And uh, just to go back to Craig's previous question, he asked about why t uh, timing on a travel advisory. So I would just again point out that a travel advisory was one of the first measures put in place by this administration, uh, and the Notify NYC uh, alert first came out at 2.50 yesterday. So the advisory was in place. That's a different thing than a state of emergency. The, the Our last oh, went out. Commissioner Iskell yes. wants to add something. Commissioner? Yeah, I was, just, I was just confirming. Yes, the travel advisory went out yesterday. That's correct. All right, we have time for two more. Uh, we'll go to Annie McDonough. Annie, you can unmute your line. Questions. Uh, first, do you have advice on where people living in basement apartments or experiencing flooding should go, where they should move to higher ground in that event? Are there city locations where they could go and access um, somewhere to be if they're experiencing flooding at home? And second, for the mayor, can you talk more about what you saw in East New York this morning? Were you examining street conditions, talking to residents? What exactly were you doing there? Uh, the the uh, issues around uh, uh, basement apartments and where we're going to have people, the first order of business is to make sure we properly rescue. And we will have sites for those who can't go with families and friends. We will always provide shelter for those who are in need, and we will navigate that. Uh, I was in East New York over at the uh, Christian Cultural Center uh, for, unfortunately, uh, a loss of a police, a former retired police officer. And while I was there, I took the opportunity to go through East New York into Canarsie, uh, into the Flatbush area, as well as the Sheepshead Bay area to get an observation on what was happening on the ground prior to doing uh, this press uh, advisory. Our last question will go to Joe Anuda from Politico. Joe, you can unmute your line. Joe going once. Oh. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was wondering, actually, uh, for the OEM Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Iskell, can you just give us a sense of the media hits that you've mentioned that you did yesterday to warn New Yorkers? And then for uh, DP Commissioner, can you talk a little bit about um, when you started clearing catch basins, how many you cleared? Um, just describe the operation a little more. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. I did a 10-10 uh, winds hit and uh, and then did a Fox weather hit. Um, and then we've also, as the mayor has noted, sent out the Notify NYCs, the press releases, the travel advisories, social media posts, in addition to all the other messaging that was coming from the city. All right. That's all the time and we then, have. And then, hold on. Uh, do you want me to answer uh, the other part? Oh, sorry about yeah. that, Commissioner. Go ahead. 
Yeah, um, so just uh, yesterday morning, the flash flood, I don't have the precise time, uh, the flash flood plan was uh, activated yesterday morning. Um, and as per that plan, DEP, along with several other city agencies, sanitation, DOT, a couple of other agencies that have crews on the roads, we have a list of priority intersections, which are highly vulnerable to flooding.